their channel. Today I'm going to be reading another Lost episode creepypasta. It's called The Amazing World of Gumball The Grieving. This creepypasta was suggested by Copy Angel Stop Motion. Thank you Copy Angel for suggesting this video. I appreciate it greatly. And for anybody else watching the video, make sure to check out Copy Angel Stop Motion's YouTube channel where he does stop motion videos. I'll be putting a link in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. So again, thank you Copy Angel Stop Motion for making a suggestion. And if anybody else, if you have any suggestions on creepypastas or SCPs you'd like me to do, let me know in the comments below and I'll give you a shout out in the next video. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. I have always loved Cartoon Network as a kid. As I was growing up, it was my all-time favorite channel to watch. Even today, it has some good shows like Adventure Time and Regular Show. One of the newest shows on the network, The Amazing World of Gumball, is a cute and mildly entertaining show. It's not my cup of tea. It's a little immature, but my little brother seems to like it a lot. One night, I was watching Adult Swim when I realized that I'd been up so late that I hadn't even kept track of time. It was already 4 a.m. I didn't recall ever watching Adult Swim this late, so I stayed awake to see what would happen when it ended. A little bumper showed up at the bottom of the screen during a commercial break. It said that a special episode of The Amazing World of Gumball was about to come on. I was a little confused about an episode of a very popular new show coming on this early, but I was bored and decided I would watch it, thinking it might come on later in the day so I could spoil it for my little brother. Yeah, I know that was that's kind of mean, but the flashy and energetic intro theme played, although it was played a little different than I recalled. The music was a little different and the show's logo wasn't animated. Its colors were done rather sloppy as well, almost like something a little kid would do on a doodle board or a glow board. I ignored it, assuming that it was just done for this special episode. The title of the episode was The Grieving, a sort of sad title, but I didn't really pay much attention. It began with Gumball, the show's 12-year-old protagonist, standing alone, facing a corner of his dimly lit classroom. He looked absolutely miserable, a far cry from the cheerful demeanor he usually had. There was no one else in the room, not even his best friend and adopted brother Darwin, the goldfish. And the windows in the room clearly showed the night sky outside. I was really starting to get confused. Why would he be at school at night? And why was he standing in the corner all sad and alone? After about what seemed like a minute of, gum of Gumball standing soberly in the corner, the scene suddenly changed. We were in Gumball's house. Once again, the scene is silent and a little disquitting. Richard, Gumball's en enormous rabbit father, walked in from the kitchen. He looked even more miserable than Gumball had in the previous scene. Richard isn't wearing his usual attire. He dressed in a fancy black suit, a little uncharacteristic of him since he's usually a slob. He sighed and slumped down onto the sofa and started sobbing intensely, sounding like someone who had just lost something important. I was starting to get creeped out. Where was the silly, fun cartoon that I usually look forward to watching with my younger brother? This was something completely different. I was beginning to think that this might have been some something the creators did as an experiment or something, a test of animation or sound perhaps, though it couldn't have been. Aside from the opening theme, which was still different from the final show, the episode had been much quieter than it usually was. Only subtle sounds and very little music. And the animation was not anything to write home about either. It was done 
a bit like an amateur flash on new ground. The character design was somewhat sloppy and rush looking, and the real life backgrounds used for the show looked different. As confused and somewhat frightened as I was, for some reason I kept watching it. Poor Richard was still sobbing on the sofa as the front door opened suddenly, making me jump a bit at such a loud noise. And Gumball's mother, Nicole, a blue cat like him, stepped in. Like Richard, she wasn't wearing her usual outfit for some reason. She was in a black dress and was wearing a pretty black hat to match. Nicole sat down on the couch to comfort her husband, although she was looking a bit sad herself. By this point, Richard crying had begun to get more pain and miserable sounding. This wasn't the normal cartoon crying on the show. This was a realistic and almost dis depressing crying. Finally, what seemed like hours, the sad scene at the home ended and it shifted back to the school. We weren't in Gumball's classroom this time. We were in the Principal Brown's office. Nicole and Richard were there in their usual clothes, looking more normal and happy than they had before, but still slightly worried. Principal Brown, however, looked extremely sad. He quietly and soberly informed them that their children, Aeneas and Darwin, were not present after lunch early that day. They hadn't been seen for the rest of the day. Nicole was instantly furious at him and began swearing, calling him things that I don't think would have made it on a more mature program like the regular show. I was laughing at this because it seemed sort of funny for Nicole to flip out in, in such a manner and start swearing like a sailor in a G-rated cartoon. But my outlook soon changed when Principal Brown told her something else and after she finally calmed down. His eyes began to tear up as he informed them that they eventually were found, but they had not been found alive. He then went into more graphic and nearly nauseating detail describing how their bodies were found. Their parents sitting in utter shock. I could hardly believe what was happening. How could such a cheery and fun kid show be taking such a dark and twisted turn? I was considering turning off the television, but I was too scared to be left in the dark by now, nearly frozen by fear and disturbed intensely at the terrible things that he was saying. Another flashback. The scene was earlier that day, and the animation in the scene was even worse than earlier. I don't remember it very clearly, but I think he began his recollection by saying that the school had called it the police department when they first turned up missing, believing that they, that the kids had simply ran off and decided to skip school. They said it was very uncharacteristic of both Darwin and Aeneas to go skipping school like delinquents. Darwin was a little naive and a, and a bit ditzy. But he was a good kid, and he wouldn't even dream of doing something like that. And Aeneas was even less likely to run away. She was a straight-A student, despite only four, which also troubled the police. Seeing as a defenseless four-year-old girl was missing as well as an older boy. The school had been truly checked, so the police started to search heavily the wooden area outside of the school. It took little time for the police to discover a, the horrifying fate of Aeneas. In a small clearing outside of the school, Aeneas' head was found in a small box. You likely would have expected something like that to be shown in the show's cartoonish art style, but it was nothing like that at all. Realistic blood covered the box, in and out. Well, Aeneas' head was done in the normal style, but was drenched in blood and some other fluids, not all of them hers apparently, there was a note in the box, seemingly written in her blood. It was never stated during the episode what exactly was written on the note, but it apparently led to the rest of her remains and Darwin's heavily mutilated corpse. What I remember most about this scene 
was how out of place it seemed. All the blood and gore from Darwin's and Annie's slaughtered and dismembered remains was done in a very realistic and disgusting way. It looked like the scene had been taken from a crime scene photograph done by a professional, not something from a cartoon. The way the scene was animated was different from most of the show as well. You may know that the characters from the series are done in vastly differing animation styles, from flash animation to CGI, and I think that there's even a character done by someone putting their chin upside down to make a face. This particular scene wasn't like anything I had ever seen on the show before. Every little detail on Darwin's face was clearly illustrated. He looked like a, like a zombie. His face was very pale and his eyes had been gulged out by someone. Aeneas fared no better, or what was left of her anyways. She was naked and her stomach had been slid open. Her intestines were strewn around the tree and bushes in the woods, done once again in a very morbid and realistic style. I was feeling very ill by the time this incredibly disturbing flashback had come to an end, so I quickly ran to the bathroom to vomit. I was feeling better after check after unchucking, so I had realized that I had good timing and went to the bathroom during a commercial break. It was then I noticed that the show had been running twice as long. It was usually ran for 11 minutes that this episode was running for about 30. By then, I was wondering if there was any information on The Grieving, on IMDB or something. So while the commercials were still playing, I looked up some information about the episode on Google. Nothing came up, no information remotely similar to the plot or name of this episode existed anywhere. Now incredibly scared and wondering if anybody else was watching i quickly dialed my brother larry and asked him to turn on cartoon network and see if he was seeing the same shit i was seeing he was pretty mad that i woke him up at this hour but he's a nice guy and told me he would see for me i thanked him and stayed on the line as the show came back from commercial break the scene had thankfully panned away from the horrific sight of the children mutilated and was back to the principal's office. I asked Larry if he saw some cartoon animals talking or crying since that was what they were doing on my TV. To my surprise, he said he saw nothing like that. Instead, it was a rerun of an old Looney Tunes short. In utter shock, I dropped the phone and ran over to the TV to turn it off. And as hard as I pressed the buttons, it would not shut off at all. I tried every single button and none of them did a thing. I tried to unplug the whole thing as well, but nothing worked. The TV stayed on no matter what. Larry had hung up, assuming that I was playing a joke or something, I guess. And I was alone once again. My door was locked from the outside somehow, and the door to my bathroom was also locked as well. It seemed that I had no choice but to call the police, since my other family members were all gone that night. It was the reason I could stay up so late to watch Adult Swim in the first place. When I hurried to dial the numbers, I accidentally dropped my cell phone into a cup of Pepsi. I was very scared and had no choice but to finish the episode. I turned on all the lights in my room and got under the covers, hiding like my little brother does when I make him watch scary movies with me. I had apparently missed a little bit, but Gumball's parents were still talking to Principal Brown, so not that much. Nickel was asking him if Gumball was alright. Apparently, since she hadn't remembered him when Principal Brown told her what had happened to Darwin and Anius? He looked slightly confused and shocked for a moment and explained to her that he thought Gumball was out sick today and he had spent the day at home by himself with the stomach bug. Nickel screamed and wailed, 
while Richard quietly told him in a very out of character voice that they thought Gumball had got on the bus in the morning, but it didn't seem that way. The police were called once again to search the building and the small forest outside Elmore Junior High. They had found him in Miss Simeon's classroom, hanging by a noose with a blood-covered knife behind him and blood covering his clothing. The episode ended with the shot of Gumball's dead body hanging there in the corner, fading to black. The credits rolled silently, not like the usual way Cartoon Network annoyingly airs a promo that squashes half the screen. These credits rolled unusually slow, and they weren't that fun to watch either. A little creepy. Just plain white text scrolling on a black background. I only recognize Ben Barkulet's name, as he was the creator of the show. The rest were people I've never heard of. The copyright notice at the end said, Cartoon Network Studios 2001, which is incredibly odd, seeing as the show was a new for 2011. After all that was over, the screen went to static for a split second, during which some incredibly creepy and shocking video clips were shown between static intervals. I can still remember them all very clearly. The first was a picture of a person in a plague doctor outfit. These always scared me for some reason. And the way the person in the suit was filmed was just as bad. A red light, something that freaks me out incredibly, was shown over the clip. The next was what seemed like a video being played very quickly, over and over, of a kitten's face being squashed by a woman wearing high heels, which was strange because a so-called friend of mine sent me a picture yesterday of a cat being step it on and kill it, similar to the kitten in the video. The last one was the one that disturbed me the most and made me want to both cry and vomit my guts out. It was my little brother, or at least a small child who looked very similar to him, being shot in the face by a person who looked like my father. You could clearly see the child's brains and blood splatter on the wall. I began to sob uncontrollably after the traumatizing clip, so much that I passed out. When I woke up, my door was unlocked and my television was turned off. I went to call the police on the home phone in my kitchen and reported that I'd seen some very disturbing things on TV and that my doors had been locked. When they arrived, they couldn't find nothing like what I'd remember from earlier this morning. I told my brother about the episode and he fainted. My internet history was even cleared. They were angry at me and just assumed that I had just, I just had a bad nightmare when I was sure I hadn't. Good thing I recorded the episode. The officers were shocked at what I showed them. One of the officers felt bad for me and took me out to a small diner so we could recollect my thoughts. At the diner, I remember that my family was out visiting my aunt and they were supposed to be back by noon or so. It was already 11, so the officer and I drove back only to find a whole squad of police cars and even some government agents at my house. They explained to me that my little brother was missing and that my mother and father were major suspects. I was freaking out and, and I tried to tell them about the disturbing clip of the boy who looked like my brother being shot in the head, but they wouldn't listen. I stayed with my older brother, Larry, who wouldn't believe me either, still insisting that all he saw was an old Looney Tune cartoon and nothing at all creepy or weird. The cops eventually told me that they would contact Tuna Broadcast and tell them about the incident. A representative of Tuna Broadcasting came to my cousin's house to talk to me in private about what I'd seen and experienced that night. He was very kind, but in all, he seemed a, a little like some 
saw it up front. After I could tell him all I remembered, he agreed to play back the day's programming from what the inc- from when the incident with the disturbing gumball episode had occurred. To my shock, all that was aired at that time was an old Looney Tunes short. Nothing more, nothing less. I hysterically sobbed and moaned that what I had experienced and seen was completely real, but no one listened. Eventually, I discovered that Ben Borkulet had a Twitter account, so I sent him a message about the episode, and this was the reply that I got. One thing, how the heck did you find that? I never ever thought I would think about that old shame again. Don't tell anyone this, Sarah, but the amazing world of Gumball goes back way further than you know. I used to have a really boring job as a teen, and I sketched little drawings of the Watersons and friends. The episode you saw was never supposed to be seen by anyone but me and a few friends of mine. It was very, very awful thing to do, but we made the episode as a joke. A guy from my old job, who everyone hated, had lost a child to a crazy serial killer, who is apparently still out there somewhere. Anyway, we made it so we could make fun of how he came into work usually, crying like a fool. Which is you saw Mr. and Mrs. Watterson crying so much in the episode. I know, I am deeply sorry for what I did, which is why I tried to bury that stupid thing years ago. Literally, I went out into the countryside with my mates and dug a hole and buried it. What I don't get though is how you describe the blood and guts and stuff. We didn't have any scenes with Darwin and Ananasius bodies found, being found. All that happened in the episode is the parents were informed of the kids being found dead and them crying like crazy. We didn't even draw anything in the episode like that at all. We're not that sick. Now, this is my theory. The lunatic who killed the man's child found the tape we buried, watched it, and heavily edited it. Then he hijacked the local TV station at, somehow, and got the episode to air on your local cartoon network station. Now, why your brother couldn't see it, I have no idea. Why it seems you're the only one who saw it, I have no idea either. I'm sorry, I just don't know. Now, for the explanation you've been waiting for, the clip the clips at the end, I don't know. I don't. I'm deeply sorry from the bottom of my heart, but I don't know why those clips are were aired. I just don't. I'm sorry. I really am. But me and my mates are just the ones who made the scenes with Richard and Nicole crying. That's it. I'm sorry, Sarah. I'm so deeply sorry. Best wishes. Ben Baruclet and everyone involved with the grieving. Seriously, stay the fuck away from that episode.